ይህ አዲስ ቅኝት የሚዲያ አገልግሎት ነው So my name is Aaron Brahane I'm from Eritrea originally a uh, journalist so I have been around almost for 17 years now it's amazing how fast the time flies <laughs> uh, uh you know since I came to Canada and I became uh, part and parcel of Pen Canada in context I know his wife I've met him privately I've met him Uh, advocacy events I've been into schools with him I've worked on campaigns with him I've written letters with him um and on a day in which the temptation is towards great sadness I want instead to take a long view of his life and and look at the the enormous strengths that Richard was referring to um for those of you who don't know Aaron's back story is second to none his journey to Canada who would make a movie by itself i know some of you here have similarly um harrowing experiences but um Aaron's is quite astonishing uh he could have been killed at five different points along the way he survived by uh, and as you, you will remember he was a very slow speaking and deliberate human being which belied a very quick intelligence that definitely saved his life when he escaped i'll give you one brief example he went to sudan shortly after couldn't speak the local language was dressed in the wrong clothes and had the wrong cut of his beard he survived by pretending to be mute when spoken to so he would not be exposed just the sheer brilliance of not of working that out i i i was always amazed that he made nothing of it but as i came to know him i realized he made nothing of most of his qualities and i think this is what we all admired aron brahani was born in asmara eritrea in 1969 co-founder and former editor in chief of Eritrea now band largest independent newspaper Satit he escaped arrest in 2001 by fleeing to Sudan and subsequently settling in Toronto he started Mft a monthly newspaper serving Eritrean community in Toronto he was also a chair of the writers in exile committee of Pen Canada of a really great spirit. Mm-hmm. Um Aaron made good everything that he touched. And I'd like to begin with uh, acknowledging the importance of his family. I was fortunate enough to attend uh, the wedding of his oldest daughter. And you could simply see in the room full of Eritrean people um, what a leader he was in that community and how significant he was in sustaining their hope. And I think that at this point, they, that community in particular must mourn his loss. uh his effective um for uh, his ability to vocalize the hopes and the dreams of the Eritrean people in Canada uh i also mourn with his 
wife Melete, his daughter Freta, Lucy and Evan, his sons. He was a great father. Uh, and they will miss him more than we can say. Uh, I first met Aaron, uh, Aaron uh, as I became very involved in the Eritrean community, which was under significant pressure from the Canadian government at some point. And I felt, uh, from what I had heard from the Eritrean refugees, that Aaron Berhani was somebody I should meet. I knew he was starting a newspaper. I knew that he cared about the issues. But I was so unprepared for the sheer dignity and uh, friendliness of this particular person. And we became good friends together, working not only for the Eritrean community, but also for writers through pen, for anybody that really reached out to, to him and asked for help. Um, <clears throat> About, uh, I guess, 2008, uh, there was a particular period in the history of Penn when Penn almost went under. Uh, there was a global economic crisis and very few people thought that Penn could survive. And it survived through the presidency of Ellen Seligman who just shouldered the burden of Penn and took it on. And at that point, she phoned me and said, whatever else goes down the tube, we must sustain the Writers in Exile program. And could you do that? Could you, could you seek out the people that would at least continue that aspect of them? And so I... I phoned, I had lunch with about 20 writers, and they all had good reasons for saying no, they couldn't take this on at this point. But there were four people, uh, Keith Lucky, whom you just heard of, uh, from Marina Nemat, who was the chair of our Writers in Exile Committee, and Aaron. And I remember having lunch with Aaron, and he just literally stepped up to, to the plate, and he said, I would love to do this. I would love to support the writers, because I know what it means. And I think it's his voice saying that I know what it means that, that we need and we need to honor him by the work that we do and that we can do and the writers that continue to ask us for help. So uh, I, I won't go on, but I do want to say that Keith has organized this writer's uh, group. Uh, I gather that Aaron has done some wonderful work on memoirs. He's written an essay about his experiences in Eritrea. And I think we should honor him by getting an excerpt published in the Star or the Globe. And somehow it's our way of saying we have lost a great Eritrean. We have lost a great writer, a great journalist. And we honor him by publishing his work. We have lost a great Canadian. I could go on. I have very happy memories of many uh, celebrations together. He always appeared with a bottle of large red wine. 
and he would want us to have that this evening. Thank you. a chance uh, to meet with uh, Arun too much. I just uh, met with him a few times, but I could really uh, understand his personality. He was uh, really so kind and polite. He was always uh, polite to me uh, at our workshops. I'm really thankful to know him, even though just it was a few times. And I would like to thank you, Margot, to organize this program and give us an opportunity to share our feelings. Um, I worked very closely with Aaron for the last couple of years, and it was just something to behold um, his excitement for what he wanted to do for people. It was con absolutely contagious. And he is a real leader. He was a real leader. And he said one of the things that he wanted to do was to see if we could get um, um, students to, and I forget the word, but you know, what is it, you edit a, when you edit a course, what is it, when you don't write all audit. these, audit, thank audit. you, thank you, I can't think of that word. It, it was so helpful, he came to Canada, he didn't know anybody, and he was allowed to audit the courses at U of T. It gave him somewhere to go, he met people, and then, you know, he felt <laughs> It, he had some connective tissue to the community and I, I you know I think that's something that I will personally work for work toward is to see that you know we can honor him by trying to make that happen for some people when they get here while they're trying to get their and, and figure out where they're going to go what they're going to do for work it really is so helpful to feel connected to something um, the other thing I'll say is that uh, I will always remember what I call his thousand watt smile. Um, you know, and he would he would he would also use it at a moment of when people were going off in different directions and you know was getting a little feisty. He would just calm everything down, and there'd be a big smile and um, put everyone at ease. So my heart goes out to his family. Um, I can't believe what a shock this would be for them, and um, I'm certainly committed to working to do some things in his memory mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. very deserving of that and of course working with him on the writer's workshop was incredible it Arun Bahani a very dedicated and courageous journalist and freedom fighter once he reflected on the beginning of Eritrean Free Press saying whenever I walk on the streets of Toronto from a subway station to where I work I encounter people who distribute a free copy of the Metro newspaper. I don't know whether it's ingrained in my mind or memory gets refreshed every day but I remember that it. The first newspaper I co-founded in Eritrea. The newspaper I hold in my hand reminds me of Satit and the people who distribute Metro with their broad smiles remind me of the children who used to distribute Satit and other newspapers in Asmara. The nostalgic feeling always throws me back to the past. I'm probably the one who knows it the least, but I can just tell you about one small incident that has remained with me. And you know, I'm I'm very grateful the fact that I actually emailed him after that incident to tell him exactly how I feel. Because as uh, humans, we forget to tell these important things, and they just fly by, and then you know, don't have to tell them about how we felt in that moment. So uh, this was in um, late 2019. And, Another person was facing some uh, immigration problems uh, after the refugee claim. This person happened to be closely associated with 
Alan um, and had contributed to Alan's hardships in Eritrea. And uh, because I was dealing with, I was trying to figure out how to help this person, I reached out to Alan quite hesitantly, knowing the situation. Uh, and he was so generous that he just picked up the phone and asked me to come to the Roncesville Starbucks over here, bought me a coffee, and we sat down and spoke for an hour about how he could help this person. And this person had had done had not done right by Alan at all. And I was so taken aback by what a generous, wonderful man he was. Um, I spoke to him two weeks back, believe me or not. Uh, there was an Eritrean gentleman whose work permit had to be done and I could not understand, we could not understand each other over the phone. So I called him up and I said, can you do a translation of a form with him on the phone? And for an editor and for uh, a professor in a college over here, that is really not a task that people take on. But Aaron just did not say no. Um, yeah, and his big warm smile, that is something that no one can forget. So yes, I am, I just hope that wherever he is, he's happy. And that, um, you know, I just hope that God says that he has found his favorite child up there because he really deserves to be I don't have that much to say. I, I was really heartbroken since uh, the morning. You know, I can't believe that we lost uh, a person like Aaron in, in you know a way I, what I can say is a few words from Henry Ward's source poem that maybe uh, tell me what I'm feeling about him lives of great men all remind us we can make our life sublime and departing leave behind us footprints on the sands of time so I do. Thanks, Kazai, for that. That was beautiful. Um, we are all so suffering and so blessed. We had Aaron in our lives. Um, I guess I'd just like to leave it by saying um, let's move forward in supporting his family. <laughs> and <clears throat> let's figure out a way that we can do that in an honorable way and figure out how to respect his memory. I think we need to I do couldn't that. met him in person due to pandemic, unfortunately, but yeah, even our online meetings were really different with Aaron. Um, his precious effort, his kindness, and, and his remarkable smile are really unforgettable. Uh, we all know what he struggled with, so, and you all know as well as I do, he, he's, he was a hero, so uh, it was an honor to know him. I'm so sad, I'm really sad. Uh, may his soul rest in peace. Thanks, Margo, and thank you for... from Penn Canada. Dear Writers in Exile Committee, I want to report to you about the portion of the Penn Board meeting which I chaired last evening when we got to the part of the agenda where Aaron would have given his report on the Writers in Exile Committee. There was a long, quiet pause in the proceeding. Various members then spoke lovingly, respectfully, admiringly, and more so to remember and honor him. I want to share with you the eloquent tribute which Penn has placed on its social media sites written by Brendan Dakaris as we all continue to grieve the loss of this special man. With great sadness, I write to share the news that Aaron Brahani passed away last Saturday after being admitted to hospital earlier in the week with COVID-19.
Aaron came to Canada as a refugee. For 17 years, he was an active member of the Penn family, a guiding spirit for the writers in exile group, an indefeatable campaigner for his imprisoned colleagues, and a much-loved colleague and friend. A native Tigrinya speaker who also became fluent in Amharic, he earned a certificate in English language and literature at the University of Regina in 2003. After moving to Toronto a year later, he earned further certification in political science and literature at the University of Toronto. In subsequent years, he added professional development and teaching qualifications and a master's degree in Immigration and Settlement Studies from Ryerson University. Following a residency at George Brown College, he joined its Faculty of Liberal Arts and Science in 2016. He was also the 2019 Penn Writer in Residence at the Humber School for Writers where he worked on a forthcoming memoir of his escape from Eritrea. In a thoughtful 2012 essay for the Literary Review of Canada, Aaron noted a significant shift in the patterns of exile for writers and intellectuals who sought refuge in the West. The flow of writers in exile comes not only from Eastern Europe, but also from Africa, Asia and South America, from countries of differing strengths and species of political ideologues. Once where censorship and intimidation tactics have a different quality and more insidious reach. The first decade of his own exile had been spent in the shadow of regime that was always keen to vandalize, attack and punish its critics. Wherever they are, criticism of the Afurki regime published in Mirti, the monthly newspaper that Aaron started in Toronto often led to slashed tires, smashed windscreens and other acts of intimidation. In that essay, Aaron argued that political asylum is an enormously generous act, but more needs to be done. If exiled writers were to make Canada their home, he called for the police to have closer liaisons with diaspora communities as they could recognize and tackle intimidation and for the government to help exiled writers and journalists rekindle their professional lives in Canada. In 2010, Aaron was reunited with his wife Mileti and their sons Muse and Ivan and daughter Frita. In an interview with the Committee to Protect Journalists, he admitted that it felt like a dream, adding that my happiness will only be fulfilled when I see the same reunions between my colleagues in jail and in exile and their loved ones. That was typical of the man always determined to put others ahead of himself, to shine that spotlight anywhere else than on his own extraordinary story. As chair of the Writers in Exile Committee, Aaron set up storytelling and editing workshops and kept the group animated throughout the COVID shutdowns with weekly video calls. He was a leading voice in our work to establish Pen Canada as a referral partner for the expedited stream for human rights defenders that the Trudeau government set out in a 2019 mandate letter to Minister of Immigration, Marco Mondesino. Hello all. It is with deep sadness I'm letting you know that our writer in exile leader, fellow writer and friend Aaron Brahani has passed away from COVID. I can't believe he is gone. About a week ago, he was feeling ill and went into the ICU at the hospital and on Saturday he died. He was a big warm-hearted man who had been through so much and accomplished so much, making a home for his family in Canada. 
at the previous workshop, Aaron presented the tattoo on my brain, a beautifully crafted piece about his bitter experiences as a journalist in Eritrea. Sad right now. This is a wonderful vehicle, Margot and Keith, and yes. thank you for setting it up. But the people who should be hearing it are his family, and they're not here. So that's we'll have to do this somehow. The truth is that I'm someone who's very pragmatic and have uh, of this. I thought that I have this pretty clear understanding of the. And today I'm struggling uh, in ways that I honestly hadn't struggled um, for quite some time. And it is because I'm also mourning um, the passing of our. Uh, I met him and his family over a decade ago at um, Romero House Camp. And when I believe we all were recently arrived to Canada. And he was the same generous, gentle, and kind person that I met at that time. I have as a memory, as a very recent memory of Aaron, um, last year I shared with him my intentions of running uh, for provincial office. And every time we will talk, he will remind me of, of, my, of my skills and why I needed to be there. Mm -hmm. But every time he will remind me of that, I will be reminded of his generous and encouraging way of being and interacting with each one of us. Uh, every word that he will say to each one of us, I, I, I had witnessed him encouraging not only me, but each one of us as writers in exile. So I believe um, his leadership was unique and was open um, to, to all this that he allows us to be in, in to encourage in, in this process. This is, and probably this is the reason why I, I feel so shocked today, because I had been constantly talking to him over emails as we were preparing a panel for, for the end of this month. And this panel was on um, multicultural media, and he was helping me organizing what that panel was going to be about. He was going to be one of the panelists. Um, and we just had a, um, another conversation um, just a few weeks ago. So when I learned of a, him being, being sick, I honestly felt that it was going to be something that he was going to pull through. So today's news um, felt absolutely close to home. It felt as feelings that I have when I lost very close relatives. And, and, it's, and I can only describe as pain because I, it's, it's like losing a family member. That's just how it feels uh, right now. And I'm extremely sad. So I, I knew Aaron for not too long, but in the projects that I was involved with him, I was always amazed by his leadership and aspiration. I will remember his calming voice all the time. And the way that, the beautiful way that he described his home country, his newspaper, in the story that he, he, he shared with us. Um, so it's, it's a sad news, it's a tragic loss for, for his family first, for our community as well, and for the broader Eritrean community. Um, I, I, I share the feeling with Anneli. I wish that his family was here to listen what we have to say about him. And I believe this meeting is being recorded. Maybe we could share this recording with his family and his family will know how we love. I have a, a story about Aaron that is not related to the book 
I don't know if any of you remember meeting Eden, who was a woman from Eritrea, also a journalist. Eden and I became friends, and I realized that she actually worked with Aaron uh, when in Eritrea. She worked on his newspaper with him. And he and his family was very, very good to her when she first arrived in Canada. He was here before her. And then Eden moved to Kitchener, and I've lost her. I can't find her. I don't know how to find her. I don't know anybody who knows her. And I spoke to Aaron about it one day, <laughs> expressing my concern for her. And Aaron was absolutely wonderful. He got on the phone. He tried to find her as well. And we have not found her yet. But I was very, I was very touched by his immediate understanding of my concern and wanted to help. And that's a memory that I will always have about him, his, his warmth and his concern and his just eagerness and willingness to help in any situation. And I was really quite shocked. I mean, I had a little meditation for him yesterday and I felt like Paolo, I felt he would pull through. I really did. I really felt that the healing was going through him and that he would pull through. And this morning I saw on Gizo's uh, web link, I saw the passing of Aaron and it was really quite a shock. It was really shocking this morning, I must say. Many uh, various uh, human rights issues, not only Eritrea and Sri Lanka, many things. And he guided me and he shared his experience, what he learned in Canada, how I can report it, the human rights issues has been going on in Sri Lanka to the international that many times. And also he shared his experience that during the time of his, uh, as his uh, separation with his family, because I had been went through the same way. And uh, he encouraged me and he always telling something in the the way of the motivation. I'm really sad and still I can see his beautiful smile and when I close my eyes, I can hear his voice as well. And this is a great loss for our community and we lost a great journalist. So I'm, I would like to send my condolence to his friends and family. You know, I just, I just want to add when I think about He's so inspiring to me, I think, in the way that he uh, accomplished so much personally and professionally with his quiet grace. Aaron took a piece of us all when he left. We are people who cover their wounds with each other and see ourselves when we look at each other. We are people who risk to spoil their own peace for the peace of others. We find what we lost in our past with each other. That's why we are a family. We saw our own days in the days of our own, just as we saw our own past. He is one of us. Our hearts will always be with him until the day we meet. Freedom is our passion. Our pain is common. Our aim is the same and our hearts are together. We will always remember him with respect and longing. Arzu. I am deeply saddened by the death of our friend, our guide in the writers in exile, the Eritrean writer and journalist, Aaron Borhani. It's unfortunate for us and for his family. He was a nice friend and inspirational one and a good professor. Aaron is a writer in exile who died in exile far from his homeland and his extended family. He fought for freedom 
of expression until the last day of his life. Our message is one, and our goal is one. Freedom, freedom of expression, and the right to life without dictatorship and tyranny. Aaron, always, we will remember you. Your eyes smile. Rest in peace. I smiled more, most about Aaron over the years, I think, can, can be broken into three broad groups. One was just the sheer tenacity. We have worked in the cases of 15 people that he knew well, in some cases very well, who have been held without charge or trial since September 2001. Several of them have died in prison. Anybody w would be forgiven for giving up on these people, but Aaron never did. He didn't in the good times or the bad, and he plugged away even when threatened. Um, and I think that in in a world in which people are always pressing for immediate results and giving up when they don't get them, they share plodding tenacity is one of the qualities that I admired most about Aaron. There's a beautiful line at the end of The Windhover by Jared Banny Hopkins, sheer plod makes plough down silly and shine. And I've always thought of Aaron for that line, a man whose view, the long road of life, he made a lot of things shine. Um, the second quality I noticed in an email that was circulated earlier today was his capacity for forgiveness. On more than one occasion, I worked with cases that he would have been well within his rights to refuse to even discuss it further because it involved people on the wrong side of the equation. But he took the long view there as well and did his best to vouchsafe the credentials of people that he could have passed on. And he always explained when we spoke about Eritrea, Afwerki, some of the government, he was not uh, a sudden convert. He understood that Afwerki was a political hero in his youth and he, he understood the drift of politics very, very, very acutely and intelligently, I thought. Um, again, a very princely quality in a man. Um, and lastly, I think what impressed me perhaps the most profoundly was his utter selflessness. Um, I have been around Aaron on many occasions in which he could easily have dominated the discussion by focusing on himself. And he never, ever chose to do so. I think it was a deeply principled view that he held that other people's stories, having nearly lost his own story, he was very protective of other people having the right to speak for themselves. Um, I can't think of a better example of, of the sort of person that Penn was created to pay tribute to. And it was a great honor to know him and to have him as my friend.